Zigbee Dongle. This is Zigbee Coordinator. This is um, cool and stuff. Um, this is a, another Zigbee Coordinator. Zigbee. Zigbee Coordinator. There's a top to it somewhere. Hold on. You want the top? Um, no. I'm just, I want to show them the inside. So in this video, we're going to show you how to get started with Zigbee to MQTT. And no, don't worry, you don't have to really jump into the whole MQTT thing. It's really more under the covers and it's there if you want to dig into it. And no, this just isn't another video about how much crap can I put on a table. I'm going to show you some of the items and some of the implementation and some of the different ways to install it, along with some of the different terminology that's probably confusing to some and how easy it is. There's no soldering, there's no type of flashing type deal, there's no wires really to it except maybe a USB cord that what we should all be able to plug those in, right? So it allows you to do a real simple, take something out of the box typically and join it to your network and let the fun begin. Let's check it out. Zigbee to MQTT, it does support a lot of devices. And speaking of device compatibility, don't go to some other link aggregator crap certified supposed website of compatible devices. Go to the source, go to Zigbee to MQTT. They have a devices list of which ones are compatible. Reputable people have added those to the list and it's a pretty clean list with lots of information. And of course, we'll leave all that down below. And speaking of that, we're gonna go through, try to quickly, well, who am I to kid? We're not gonna be quick about anything like that. We always do our in-depth reviews. And if you just wanna skip on down and jump into the different sections you want, we'll leave all the markers down below. And of course, they will leave all the affiliate links down below. And the way those do work is if you do make a purchase using one of those links, it's no additional cost to you, but it does help out the channel. We do appreciate it. So on to the terminology of how Zigbee actually works. It's going to stay pretty high level with a lot of this stuff. So typically you're going to have a coordinator and we will show some up close of this, but basically the coordinator is typically just call that the USB stick for now. It's going to be the radio. And I know a lot of people may want to call that their router, right? Because this is a network of devices, much like your Wi-Fi. Well, that's where some of the terminology gets confusing because Zigbee doesn't call the main hub the router, much like you would with your Wi-Fi. They call that the coordinator because that's the one that coordinates all the mesh traffic back and forth between all the different devices. And then even to confuse it even more, there are things called routers in the Zigbee network. And I know we typically want to call that, you know, your typical Wi-Fi router, but that's not what that is. And these are just other coordinators and we'll get to that in a second. So to start out, you have the main coordinator. And of course, I can't get this to stand up. So this device will typically go in, if it's a USB one, it'll attach to your home automation server, home automation hub, however you want to call it, from Raspberry Pis to full-blown servers to the HA Blue thing. It's just plug it in and typically go, and then we'll configure the software, which of course we'll get down in one of the chapters and show you how easy it is to install. So next you have your devices. This is just a little Ikea plug. Well, I wouldn't say little, this thing's pretty big for a smart plug. And typically most mains devices are called routers. And no, again, that's not the main router. So why they call it a router is it routes communications because it's mains powered. It does not typically go to sleep. So it stays awake the whole time. It stays attached to the Zigbee network and it listens for traffic and goes back and forth. So once you add another device, so say we'll add another smart device, such as another smart plug. 
So now we have communication that can go from the coordinator to this smart plug, to this smart plug, and then back and forth. And in the map of communications, you'll see typically just this, because both of these are mains power devices. You'll see actually a communication path that goes from here to this smart plug, to this smart plug, and also this smart plug can come back to the coordinator. And depending on things, how it wants to route things, say for instance, you've got a thick brick wall between these two and this plug can see a better signal from this plug, actually it will talk from the coordinator to this plug to this plug and it's very quick. And it handles all the routing and the routing just changes all the time based on conditions because this is in the 2.4 gigahertz network. And yes, there's an excellent document, which I'll leave the link down below and plus we'll probably go over some of the graphics on it. It shows some of the interference of your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi that can cause issues with your Zigbee network. And it's typically not the other way around. So your Zigbee network is not going to impact your Wi-Fi. It's typically the Wi-Fi is going to impact the Zigbee network. And we'll show you how to kind of get around some of that based on some of the channels you can choose. So then say you want to come in here and add a motion sensor. And this motion sensor and like most motion sensors are going to be battery powered. And since they're battery powered, you're not going to want something that stays awake and starts to route traffic. So if you have this motion detector and say it's over here, well, now there's something in between the coordinator and it doesn't can't hear that coordinator too well. It's just too far across the house. I don't know. We've all been there where you just can't you know, have your phone or tablet or whatever is just got low signal to Wi-Fi and say you've gotten a, now a mesh network. Well, this is that same type deal. So exactly what will happen is what we showed before. We'll say now that this motion detector is now listening to the communication that is forwarded by this router. And so that's the key point really to having a good Zigbee network is having a healthy mesh. And what we mean by healthy mesh is just having good signal links between everything. So let's talk a little bit about the coordinators themselves. Now these are the USB styles of coordinators. Now I would recommend if you go with USB style, which quite frankly, is going to be one of the most reliable ones because there's nothing else really involved. There's just going to be the USB connection to the server or home automation itself. Get a USB extension cable, whatever it might be. It does not need to be 3.0 because even though these may call them Zigbee 3.0, they're not USB 3.0. So you can use whatever kind of USB cable from several years back to do extension. And the reason why the extension is you really want to get the thing away from any type of interference or harmonics or whatever it might be from your server. It just kind of lets it breathe and listen a little better to some devices. Now, a lot of these may not come with cases. For instance, this is the older CC... 2531 I believe that IT did and no I do not recommend this one it's quite frankly a piece of garbage it's great for a router though if you want to put it into a USB power socket and you can flash which is very simple to do in most cases on these and you can put the router firmware on it it just handles communication and it does not coordinate everything they actually work pretty good in that case. This one is the newer one by IT. It's not the chipset that I prefer for Zigbee 2MQTT. It is in the experimental stages for Zigbee 2MQTT. It does work with ZHA fairly well, but we're not going to be doing a whole lot of ZHA. I will talk about that in one section of this video. It does not come with a case, but it is fairly cheap. One thing to note, I have heard that IT is actually going to come out with the CC2652 series, which leads us to that one. And no, I'm not going to even really talk about this one too much. This is that dual 
Z-Wave and Zigbee. I wouldn't recommend it at all for Zigbee. If you want to use it for Z-Wave, go right ahead, but that's not what this video is about. So the CC2652. Right now as the recording, the CC2652 is kind of the king of all things for coordinators. It's a chipset that is used in several different coordinators, and I would recommend getting a CC2652. They'll call them the CC2652P2. There's several different other ones, but mainly get that number series. It's a really quick processor inside. It can handle all the interactions and traffic and everything with Zigbee, and it just works, and it works great with Zigbee 2 MQTT plus ZHA. And if you've tried in the past one of these CC 2530 or 31s and you thought Zigbee was just a bunch of crap, well, that's because of this. Get you one of these and you'll see the difference. So due to a lot of the shortages and chips and things of this year, it was difficult to find a lot of these chipsets. Luckily, a lot of different people have started making these and there's a bunch of different companies and individuals that have started making this model and I would just check out the supported adapters on Zigbee to MQTT. It changes all the time and it'll find all the links where you can just go purchase whatever you need there. So what about other types of coordinators? Well, there is another one that it's still USB. It just comes with a little USB cable. Doesn't come with this case, I 3D printed this case. It's a Zigbee development board. And this one actually includes the 900 megahertz, which you don't see a whole lot in Zigbee, but it is basically gonna be the same chip as the CC2652. It's just got a little different numbering, but it does work extremely well. It does have the higher power. It does have an external antenna if you want to enable it. But again, this is a larger board. It does work great and it's real easy to put whatever firmware on it because you just hit the software and go. You can get these straight from TI, I believe. And this is one of the supported adapters of Zigbee to MQTT. Yeah, you've seen this one before. I did a couple videos on it. And this is actually the same exact chipset that's in this IT Zigbee 3.0 dongle. And I know Teddy likes that term. But this one, you'll notice there's no other network connections. No, that's not to attach to the computer. This one is actually the Zigbee bridge. And it has a Wi-Fi ESP chip inside along with the Zigbee chipset. And that's great in some cases and it's bad in others. And yes, you can use this with both ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. But one of the problems is if you attach the Wi-Fi and it's on one of those channels that they interfere with each other. Well, that's one of the problems. Now you can have the Wi-Fi on here interfering with the Zigbee on itself and it does cause issues. Now, one of the easy things is you can just take this and go put this in the middle of your home or whatever it may be because say you have a bunch of battery power devices and it's really easy just to locate, of course. So that's one of the advantages, but I would say it's got a, several diff different disadvantages with it. And you should probably look at trying to build that healthy mesh. And that way you don't have to worry about where you locate the coordinator. Now there's another one that's pretty interesting. Comes in a cool little case made by our guy named Tube. He puts these together and of course, I'm gonna take the top off because that's what I do here and not that way. But if you look inside, you'll notice one thing that looks pretty familiar here. If you've been looking at this USB one. Well, it's the same CC2652, except it does have the antenna port enabled on this one. And if you're familiar with the channel, hey, that looks pretty familiar. This is a ESP32, but it's got an Ethernet port on it. So just to give you a better idea, this is like the Node MCU that you have all the GPIO pins for putting sensors on or whatever, doing some little DIY projects, but you know, you have your Ethernet, so you're not using Wi-Fi. No, this is not PoE, power over Ethernet. In this particular model, 
you do need to power it it's using just a regular micro usb to power it and then you just plug it up to to ethernet which you of course then would plug into your actual router that or network that goes to your isp or connects to your servers etc and then you can locate this pretty much anywhere where you want to run an ethernet cable and the great thing about it it's wired so there's no interference with the zigbee network on the coordinator itself pretty cool stuff and he makes all this and it does do some breakout pins on the side for ground gpl zero rxtx for flashing the firmware on the esp chip itself in case you need to but we're gonna put this and bring it into zigbee to mqtt i have not tried this myself so we'll try this and see how well it works out and see how good this product actually works and he does have another model i don't have that particular one that it has a built-in poe adapter in it so you could just just like your cameras where you run one data cable to it and it does provide power all on the same unit so then you could just plug it into your poe switch and it would power right up pretty cool stuff which one should you get absolutely get one that is the cc2652 whether it be the usb model or the ethernet model if you do have some issues of because you're running a vm or something else just weird you can't do type of usb pass through to your home automation system this might be for you because you can just use it over ips but it's gonna have more reliability in case something really weird happens with your network if you do use the usb style check out the list down below and get the one you want just i would stick with the cc2652 series